Hello guys, and welcome to another video. My name is Mark, I'm an entrepreneur and property investor. In today's video, I'm gonna hopefully show you how you can make tens of thousands of pounds in one phone call. And the reason I want to do this is just to show how easy it can be to make big chunks of money and how when that opportunity arises, you need to take it. So before we get into the video, if you like this sort of information, please give this video a massive like. It really does help me out with the YouTube algorithm. And if you haven't already subscribed, why not consider subscribing we have our subscriber dividend portfolio where every single month somebody wins the dividends from it. I think it's seven and a half thousand pounds at the moment and I put another two thousand pounds into that every single month. So hopefully over the next year or so we'll be paying out big chunks of money to our subscribers and you and I can take part in a passive income journey together where we're really able to help as many people as possible. But today what I really want to go into is how you can make big chunks of money using property in very few phone calls. And what we're going to be talking about is how to negotiate on a property deal. Now I'm going to give you a very very rudimental example for us to just preface everything we're going to talk about and how you're going to formulate this negotiation so that you can see the outcome. Now we're going to assume we have a house and it's worth a hundred thousand pounds that we want to buy and we're going to aim to buy it at a discount. Now if we were to buy the hundred thousand pound house for eighty thousand pounds on the day we buy it we would make the difference in equity profit. Now it's not in cash profit, although it can be, and we'll get onto refinancing a bit later, but in this instance, it's in equity profit. So for example, it's still worth 100,000, we paid 80. On our balance sheet, if you like, there would be an 80,000 pounds going out and 100,000 pounds sitting as an asset. That means there's a 20,000 pounds equity profit. Now there are actually very few activities you can do where you can make such a large amount of money in such a small negotiating time. And obviously you can scale this up, right? A 500 grand house that you bought for 400 grand, a million pound house that you bought for 800,000, you make 200,000. This is a 20% discount. Now I'm going to give you some examples of when I've seen this really happen. I've seen someone go and view a property that's worth 750,000, they put in an offer of 380. Six months later, it still hadn't sold. The conversation continued. They eventually bought that 750,000 pound house for 530, a huge discount. Now that meant that when they came to refinance that property a couple of years later, sure enough, the value had actually increased. It was now worth about 800,000. They were able to pull out all and more of their money, giving them a free property. And what we're really talking about here is the power of being able to negotiate and make money when you buy. So how are you going to do this? How are you going to put this into practice and be able to do it yourself? Well, here's the first step. You need to identify sellers who need to sell. And we do that through having a conversation really with either the seller or with the agent. You know, a good indicator would be how long the property has been on the market. Has it recently been reduced? I'll give you a great example. I'm going to see a flat on Friday that's been on the market for about three, four months. A buyer has pulled out. It was reduced last week. The seller needs to sell it. They're moving abroad. There is lots of factors in this that mean that if I can offer a solution, i.e. I will guarantee to buy it, I will put down a nice deposit, I will get my solicitors engaged straight away, all these sort of things that will really incentivize that seller to sell it to me, I may be able to take this property that's up for 100,000 as an example and buy it for 80, meaning that essentially I have 20,000 pounds worth of equity on the day that I buy it. And there's not many asset classes where you can do that. You can't do that, for example, with index funds or the or the markets, can you? The, the rate you pay in the markets is dictated by the market. Whereas with property, we can negotiate. So stage one, we're gonna to talk to the seller, we're gonna to talk to the agent, we're gonna understand a need or a real severe want. So the seller has to either need to sell it or really want to sell it. If they're near, I could sell it or not today. They're not gonna crack you a really good deal. You could still put a really cheeky offer in, leave it on the table, who knows? I did that, in fact, with my French house when I bought that. The property was for sale for 175,000 euros, I think it was at the time. We put an offer in at 115, it got rejected, we walked away, we didn't want to come up any further. In fact, we didn't have any more money, so we didn't come up any further. Six months later, her elderly parents that she lived with in that property had died, and she needed to sell. She really, really wanted out. So at that point, I got a phone call from the agent saying, 
is your offer still on the table? And at 115,000, it was. So we ended up with an eight bedroom property for 115,000. Ironically, in that instance, the exchange rate moved in our favor and we ended up buying it for 80,000 pounds. So, you know, some things really, really can double your good fortune, but none of that would have happened if I hadn't put the cheeky offer in, in the first instance. So the first thing I wanna really reassure people about is it's okay to put a cheeky offer in. It's okay to say things like, look, I'm an investor, I don't wanna offend anybody, but I have to make money when I buy. So I would be able to offer around this. Do you think the seller would be interested in something around that number? And that really is a feeling kind of question, you know? I understand it's up for 150, it's been on the market for four months. Would the seller be interested in a sale to someone like me who is an investor? Obviously, I have to make money when I buy it. I can't buy it and make no money. That's not what investors do. And all the agents know this, that's not what investors do. And if you've got all your ducks in a row and you can show proof of funds and you've got all this good stuff going for you, they're more likely than not to put that offer or have that conversation with the seller. Now, the second thing is to understand why the seller needs to sell. And if you can understand why, maybe they have something they're trying to buy. And in that case, it might not necessarily be that they need a quick sale. It might be that they need a sale that fits in with their timelines. So all we're trying to do is understand how we can solve the problem of whatever the seller's reason for selling is. And then we're putting into place our requirements, which is we have to make money when we buy. And a good place to start is 10 to 20% discount on market value. If you can get somewhere in that region, you're getting the right sort of deals today. In the past, when the market's been really, really buoyant, it's not been possible. But today, in 2023, it certainly is. We have seen already people negotiating 10, 15, 20% off. 20% is an absolute extreme at the moment, but I've seen people doing 10, 15. Now, if you can get 20, I mean, imagine how much insulation you have against any market movements. Imagine how much money you're gonna make if the market does move in a more positive direction. And most people who know me know my opinion on this. My opinion is very much that property is likely to continue to go up. And the reason really is there's nothing that serves the British population by destroying the housing market. It just doesn't serve people. All the nurses that own their own home can no longer afford their mortgages. They all need to be homeless. All the teachers, all the firemen, all the police, they all need to be homeless. No, this isn't the outcome. The outcome has to be that interest rates come back into alignment with what people can afford and property prices keep going up. No other outcome actually serves the British public. So over the next year or so, I expect a much more buoyant market. So getting back to the negotiation part of this video, right? Number one, identify properties that may have a need. Something that's been on the market a while, something that's reduced, something that, anything that gives you that indication that the property needs to be sold. Number two, ascertain what the requirement is. Three, do your viewing, ask the if I, what would, you know, that sort of question. So you don't offend anybody. But if I was to come in around this number, obviously I'm an investor. I have to make money when I buy. Would your seller be interested in something like that? Those sort of questions will get you a long, long way. And if the agent's like, look, no, the seller's not interested in anything below this. Do you know of any other properties where the seller is a little bit more flexible? Obviously investors like me, we have to make money when we buy. And nobody's gonna say, no, as an investor, you shouldn't make money when you buy. They all know the game, of course they do. And you might find that, oh no, this one, no, but this one, yes, the seller's desperate. Their buyer's just pulled out and they're moving to X, Y, Z. Oh, brilliant, let's go and see that one. I'm really interested. And all of a sudden, something else could open up. And then after that, it's putting in that offer. It's making sure you get your paperwork in line and that you can fulfill your part of the deal. And I'll tell you what, when you start doing this a little bit more regularly, and certainly in 2018, 2019, pre-pandemic, pre, pre this massive rise in property prices, which frankly, we weren't able to negotiate anything, but pre all that time, we were always negotiating well because we always had all our paperwork in line and agents were phoning us up going, look, this sale has just fallen through would you be interested? The vendor's able to take 10% less. And we were able to just go in and go, yeah, no, go, that sounds good. 
So guys, once you get a bit of a reputation, you get the ability to be able to do that. But I can't think of any other way in any other investment where you have the ability to use your own charisma, your own skill, your own nous and gut feeling to be able to make this sort of money. And my urge to you would be that 10 to 20%. Be realistic, you're not gonna get 50% off property. Highly unlikely. There would have to be a very, very specific set of circumstances that would allow that to happen. And it is probably not today. In 2010, when I bought that house in France, there was a very negative outlook for the economy. There was also a big need because her parents have both just died. So I managed to get about a 40% discount. It was a huge discount. Today, that property is worth about 250. So I've made a lot of money on that. But back then, I was able to do that. I wouldn't say that today I'd be able to negotiate the same discount on it. If it was for sale for 250, I think I would only push for 10 to 20%. So guys, get out there, negotiate well. I hope that everybody's found this video interesting. I hope it helps you. If you wanna get in contact with me, drop a comment down below. I'll make sure I reply to every single one and I'll see you on the next video. Cheers, guys.